In the next set of videos, I'm going to be creating this bench clamp by CAD CAM Tutorials. I will recommend that you go and watch his original videos. They're very good. I just am using his design so that I can break this out for our class. And I want to break it out so that we're building individual parts per class. In some cases, I've included a few additional parts, the pins that hold these pieces together. You, If you watch his videos, you'll notice that they aren't in his videos. Um, and in that case, since they're such simple parts, we may build multiple parts per video. All right, so we're going to start out. You can notice here that the parts are numbered. Um, we're actually going to start out with part number six. But let me show you what this looks like uh, when this bench clamp's working so you get a little bit better idea, uh, more so than just seeing the picture here. You can see here that this bench clamp, as this spins, this screw spins, you can see the bench clamp going up and down because this ramp is moving forward and it's engaging upon this wheel, which then changes the leverage here and pushes that clamp down. And if we move it back, we can see that it lifts up. So if this was attached to a bench, you slid a piece of material underneath it and then clamped it down, this would hold it in place. So our first piece we're going to be building is this wedge block right here. So you can see here, I have part six open up on the top right hand corner of the screen. Um, this is where it's really handy to either have a wider screen to work with or multiple screens if you're dealing with SolidWorks. Um, a lot of times it's hard to switch back and forth. If you don't have this as an option, um, you can either print off some of the designs or you can just have a nice careful notebook where you sketch down your, your measurements that you need to do. Otherwise, you'll be switching back and forth on the screens. If you have a wider screen, you can do split screen options or something like that. So the first thing we want to do is we want to go up and we want to say new, and we want to make a new part. Say so, okay. This will open up the dialog here for us. Um, and in here, we want to start on our front plane and we want to say new sketch. And so it's this button right here. You can also right click on the front plane and that gives you that option as well. You can also go over and once we have planes, so if I had this plane set as visible, we could go over here, right click on it and you can say new sketch over here too. So I'm going to turn that plane so it's not visible by clicking the hide eye there. I'm just going to click on it. I'm going to say new sketch. It's going to flip it around so it's normal to us. By that, we mean that it is flat to our screen or our perspective. And we're going to start drawing here. All right. So we're going to just take the line tool. We're going to start at the, the origin. So this point right here, which is our x, x and y are equal to x, y, and z are equal to zero. And we're going to draw a flat line out. You can see the yellow line or the yellow indicator there that shows that this is horizontal. And then the yellow indicator that shows that it's vertical. We're not really worried too much about any of the measure or any of the measurements here, but we want to make it so it's roughly close to what our end shape will be. That way, when you're adding in measurements, it's not going to mess with anything. And as you go over, you can see this dotted blue line. That means that we're coming in and we'll be perpendicular. We're on that axis, right? So that we're actually perpendicular to that line. So if we can get it there and then we'll bring it down and connect it and you can see now that it's shaded in gray because we have a connected shape so now we can go up and we can start adding in dimensions so we'll go to our smart dimensions here we're down here we're in millimeters grams and seconds you can see that down at the bottom um, and i always have that set up as default on my machine because the drawings that i work with on the class are set up in millimeters grams and seconds but sometimes you might need to change stuff over to inches or imperial measurements, uh, depending on what you're doing. Um, in this, or you know, tenths of inches or thousand, you know, or decimal inches, things along those lines. So, what we're going to do here is we're going to go in, and we can see here that we have our measurements up here in the top right corner. Our overall length is 60. So we'll go in, we'll grab this. Stuck on the midpoint. 
drop down, click, we'll say 60. This length right here is 30. And you can see shifting things around. If we were to change some other lengths, sometimes your measurements will overlap with each other. And then you gotta go around and, and kind of fudge things around a little bit to get them to work. Um, this length right here is 15. And then this length right here, our overall height is 50. And you'll notice when we do that, all of our lines become black. And basically when a line is, is blue, and not black, it means that it's not fully defined. At this point in time, all of these lines are fully defined. And what that means is that they've got a set length to them and they're associated with the origin point. So since we started at the origin, we're already associated with the origin point. If we had started somewhere off of the origin, we would have had to say, hey, from, from say this point to the origin is a certain distance too. All right, so we've got this shape drawn in 2D. Now, we can see up here on our block that it's not a 2D object, it's a 3D object, so we're going to have to extrude it out. And, we're, and we can see that our extruded width is 42. Now, there's a few things here that we can do that um, can make things a little bit easier. So, we can see that this circle on the back is actually in the center of this, uh, this block. So, what we can do is when we go to our Features button here, we do Extruded Boss Base, we can go and we can say mid-plane extrusion. And you can see here that it's giving us a width of 10 because that's its default, but it's five to this direction and five to that direction. So the mid-plane is having that width. So we see we want it to be 42. So we can add in 42 and there we go. And we say, okay. And that gives us a 3D block. You can see this 3D block is has a width of 42. Um, and now what we want to do is we want to sketch on the back here. So like I said before, like you remember how we said we can click on planes and sketch them? Well, in this case, we can actually click on this face and we can say new sketch. And what it does is it takes that plane or that face and makes it normalized to us. So it flips it around so it's flat to our view. And now we can draw on a few things here. So we want it to be centered along that center line. Um, and so a good way to do that is we can actually just draw in a center line here. And this line is just for construction. So it's just to give us a reference when we're drawing things, but it lets the program know, like if we place things on this line, it then gives it that association that, Hey, I'm, I'm on that center line. And you can see here that we have a vertical indicator for this line. Click on that, push, push escape. That gives us a line here. And now what we can do is we can go up to our circle tool. We take our circle tool here. We can get on the line and we can draw our circle out. Now you can see here when we were drawing this that we got an indicator for the midpoint of, of that center line. Um, and I'm not seeing it right now. Yep, yeah, there we go right there. And that is also over here on this line. We'd have an indicator for that midpoint right here. And this is the midpoint of this, this dotted line we drew. So it doesn't actually line up with the midpoint of this. So if you were to start your circle on that midpoint, it then creates an association with that midpoint that you might have to break, uh, that you might have to delete so that you, we can move the circle in around in a way that is meaningful that we want to do. Uh, we can get to that a little bit later. All right, so let's go back to our smart dimensions. We we'll click on this circle, pull off from it. And right now what we're showing is we're showing that we're, we're giving it the value for its diameter. Sometimes you will see in drawings where they give you the value for the radius. Sometimes they give you the value for the diameter. On the drawing over here in the corner, you can see that there is next to the 18 that shows our value for the, the diameter. There's a circle with a line through it. And that's showing that that's the diameter value that's, that's happening there. All right, so we'll go over here and we'll tell this we want it to be 18. You can see our circle got bigger. You can see, see that it's still in blue though, because even though it knows it's supposed to be on this line, it doesn't know the distance from the bottom up. 
And it, it turns out that this, this point is actually centered. So what we can do is we can click on this point. We can go down and click on this bottom line, pull off over to the side here. I'm going to say 25. As soon as we do that, we see that this shape goes black, right? All right. So now we say, okay. Now what we want to do is we want to go down to our features tab here and we want to do an extruded cut. And so we can flip this around and we can see that right now it's set up because we just did an extruded cut that was off of a mid plane or we did an extruded boss base that was off in a mid plane. It's defaulting to the thing that we used before. We don't need it to be mid plane. We're actually going to go in and we're going to say it's going to be blind. And that means Blind just means it's it's referenced to one surface. All right. And we know the depth of this cut, if we look up at our drawing here, is supposed to be 40. So we're going to make that 40. We say OK. And then we click Green Chat Box. And you can see here that we have a hole cut into this block. So if you want it to be able to see that hole in the block in a different way, so say we, we go here and we click on our perspective and we go flat to this edge. There's a few things that we can do. Uh, we can go up and we can actually click on some of our display styles here. One of them will give us a dotted line and see we can see that this is that cutout inside there. And we can see that from different angles. So looking down on top of it, we see that it's there as well. Um, but and here's the other side. I should have flip this around. So we got it right side up and to the to the way that we were drawing it before. All right, and so now we can see it this way. But let's go back in and let's put it back to a solid shape. And then the other way we can look at it is we can do this this section view. We'll see this a little bit later too. But you can see here that the section view, you can drag the section view in and out. And that gives you a cut, right? And so it's basically just taking a sectioning of this, this item. So we don't want to see the section view anymore. So let's just go, we'll go up here and we'll say exit for our section view. We're back to where we need to be. But we know that our part now, and this is part six on the drawing, is a complete part. So in the drawing, it's purple or a pinkish color. So let's make it so that it's purple so that we can keep track of our parts, all right? So we're gonna go up and we're going to click on this little edit appearance up here at the top. Yours might not have this toolbar in here. Uh, it may or may not. Um, if it doesn't, we can you can adjust that under your uh, under your settings options, you can say what toolbars you want up here. You can also right click and go to toolbars and pick the toolbars that you want up here. All right, so we're going to say we want this to be that lovely pink color. It's a little darker. No, let's go with that one. Yep, and there we go. We can say OK. Now we have the whole thing as that color. And then we can go up and we can say save. And what we want to do is I, I've already built this part, um, all of these parts, because you saw that I had the 3D model originally. But you'll want to start a folder for this um, and call it bench clamp and then just save it as part six. And then that part will be saved as part six, which you want to have all the parts saved. It, it's actually a little bit, it's easier if you have them saved in the same folder when you go to do your assembly. So if you just make a folder for every one of our projects that we're going to do, uh, that way you can have all your parts in your assembly. All right. Thank you for watching this first part of the video. Um, we're going to stop there. I know that this is a relatively short video, but like I said, um, we're just getting started here. So some of the parts are going to be pretty easy. Some of them will do multiple parts in the videos. Thanks for watching.